ever felt confused by those bold health claims on food labels? Well, get ready to uncover the truth. In today's video, I'm sharing seven common health claims that are actually meaningless. Don't fall for the marketing tricks. Learn how to decode labels and make truly informed choices about what you eat. Welcome back Thrivers for another quick video on nutrition tips. If you're new here, thanks for joining us. I'm Amy, a registered dietitian who is on a mission to set the record straight on true food facts and have some fun sharing healthy recipes along the way. If this interests you, then consider subscribing. For those of you returning, I appreciate each and every one of you and welcome back. This topic is one I often get asked to speak about because it seems food labels have gotten out of control. Grocery store shelves are lined with products trying to scream all their benefits to you or how they are the perfect thing to fit into your diet. Even when you try to read the packages and nutrition labels, it can still be difficult to know if you're making a good decision. So what's real and what's just pure marketing jargon? This is the most common claims on food packaging. However, it seems like more and more pop up every day. If one of these surprised you, let me know in the comments below, or just let me know the one that makes you roll your eyes the most when you see it in the grocery store. Let's start with one of the biggest, all natural. Have you seen products boasting their all naturalness in your grocery store? I'm sure you have because they are everywhere. Nearly everything from meats to peanut butter to sodas and Cheetos have used all natural on their product labeling. When was the last time you saw a Cheeto growing in the wild? Well, here's something you might not know. All natural is not a regulated term, but it does get people to buy products. At a minimum, it makes you think that it could be found in nature, but this really isn't true at all. All natural gives the impression that the product is somehow healthier as well, but don't be dismayed. Natural does not mean healthy, nor does it make the product any better from another product. Honestly, it means nothing. Heck, the FDA even said that high fructose corn syrup could be labeled as natural. The problem is we sometimes confuse natural with organic, but these terms are very different. The FDA's stance is that they do not object to the use of the term if the food does not contain added color, artificial flavors, or synthetic substances, which leaves the door wide open for food manufacturers to use natural or all natural as they please. So if you see all natural on a box during your next grocery trip, just pause and say out loud, not today, food company, not today. Don't let it convince you it has health benefits. Look at the label and read the ingredients to get to the truth. Uh, you're not from around here, are you? We're here for New Sun Kids Fruit Rocks Fruit Snacks. There are two kinds, both are made with real fruit. Wow. Who remembers commercials like these from the 90s? Drop me a comment below if you do. Stating that fruit snacks or other food products are made with fruit seemingly implies that the product must be healthy. I mean, it does have actual fruit in it, right? Well, not always. This one really gets me because sometimes these products don't even contain the fruit they show on the label. Or they could be made from fruit juice that is essentially condensed down into a concentrated sugar. For example, fruit roll-ups got into some hot water when they were sued over the fact that their strawberry-flavored fruit roll-up showed images of strawberries on the box, yet the product did not contain any actual strawberries in them. As of right now, the FDA does not regulate how much actual fruit or vegetable must be used in a product in order to use the made with real fruit claim. And the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics has urged the FDA to review these claims and the use of misleading images of whole fruits and veggies on products with minuscule amounts in an actual serving. Until this recommendation gets some backing by the FDA, do your own sleuthing and read the labels to see if there's actually fruit in the product and know that these products are not going to have the nutrients and fiber of real fruits and are not a swap for fresh or frozen fruits. If you've gone down the bread aisle at your local grocery store recently, you know that the options for breads are almost endless. Multigrain is a pretty popular marketing tactic, and it seems like multigrain bread would be pretty healthy, right? If there's more than one grain in the product, that must be good for you. But don't confuse multigrain with whole grain. Unfortunately, this claim is very misleading. 
While the product may show a lovely wheat field on the box and claim the product is multigrain or made with whole grains, it can still be mostly enriched wheat flour. The best way to evaluate these products is to look at the label. The first ingredient listed makes up the largest part of the product. If you're looking to purchase a whole grain bread, the first ingredients should be a whole grain. If it's enriched wheat flour, that means the flour has been refined and stripped of the germ and the bran and all the nutrients, and then they add nutrients back in. Examples of whole grains are whole wheat flour, whole grain oats, whole barley, and brown rice, among others. Lastly, check the fiber to verify the presence of whole grains. Aim for breads to have about three grams of fiber per serving, for cereals about five grams per serving, and crackers around three grams per serving. If there's little to no fiber, there's likely little to no actual whole grains in the product. When you see free range on a package, do you picture happy chickens roaming around a lovely large farm? Well, that's not always the case. The only requirement that companies need to meet in order to put free range on their package is that the farm give the chickens an undefined amount of access to an outdoor area. The size of the area does not have to meet a minimum space requirement. Here's the USDA's definition of free range. The definition sounds good on the surface, but you can clearly see there are no defined space requirements for the hens. A farm could quite literally provide a single small door on the side of a large barn to a tiny outdoor area, which most chickens may never even venture to. Once again, don't let this claim sway you. Free range does not equal healthier eggs, nor does it mean the hens were freely roaming outdoors, living their best life. This one is super tricky because with a name like natural flavor, you would think you're consuming something that is in fact natural, which is just plain misleading. The FDA defines natural flavors as a substance extracted, distilled, or similarly derived from natural sources like plants, such as fruits, herbs, vegetables, barks, roots, or animals such as meat, dairy, eggs, with its primary function in food being flavoring rather than nutritional. If you're confused, you are not alone. Basically, these flavors are made in a lab to enhance the flavor of a product. And while creating these natural flavors is done following regulations by the Flavor Extract Manufacturers Association, yes, that's a real thing, it doesn't mean these flavors are truly natural, nor do they have any health benefits. Some natural flavor mixtures can contain more than 100 chemicals, including solvents, emulsifiers, flavor enhancers, and preservatives. They are technically partially natural because they're derived partly from the food product they're trying to mimic, and they're also partially artificial because they're mixed with other products to mimic a flavor. One caveat to this is organic flavors or organic natural flavors, which are strictly regulated and cannot contain that long list of ingredients, including synthetic or artificial preservatives. You'll find these natural flavors in a lot of foods, and not just processed candy and protein bars, also in crackers, yogurts, canned soup, flavored waters, and some ice creams. This is another pure marketing slogan, and one that works. Related to eggs, all eggs do come from farms, whether it's a big commercial hen house or a local open pasture farm. As for the fresh part, this generally means that a product has not been frozen, yet eggs in the shell should never be frozen. So this term means nothing yet gives the impression of a lovely farm with fresh ingredients when in reality the eggs could be from a big industrial farm. You just really can't tell anything from this label. This one is new, but it really grinds my gears. The keto diet is everywhere now. And we have keto products and everything from cookies and crackers to protein bars and cake mixes and ice cream. First of all, don't equate keto with healthy. Let's just get that out of the way. I won't go into my thoughts on keto, but just because a label is using the term keto, it does not mean it is good for you. In fact, most of these are quite the opposite. The term keto is definitely not regulated. Maybe it will be one day, but to be keto, it does have to fit within the diet profile of really low to no carbohydrate. However, when carbs are removed from a food product, the manufacturers add in other ingredients so that it actually tastes good. For example, this Halo Top Fudge Brownie Mix, only 90 calories. But when we look at the label, the ingredients list is a mix of artificial sweeteners, some actual sugar, oil, it's basically crap. Many of these keto products use the artificial sweetener erythritol, 
which has been linked to cardiovascular events. So just have a real brownie, enjoy it and savor it, and then move on with your life. Now that I've shared a list of nonsense claims, there are some nutrition and health regulated claims that are allowed and regulated with a caveat by the FDA. First one is health claims. These describe a relationship between a food and the risk of a health condition. Like diets low in sodium may reduce the risk of high blood pressure, a disease associated with many factors. Health claims must undergo a long process to be approved for use by the FDA. Now these next two, the really important thing to know is that they are regulated by the FDA, but they do not have to be pre-approved by the FDA before the product hits market shelves for consumers like us. The first one is structure function claims, which describe a specific role a nutrient can play in our health, like calcium builds strong bones or fiber maintains bowel regularity. The second one is nutrient content claims. These describe the amount of a nutrient that's in a product, such as low sodium or fat-free, and they do have to follow the FDA's guidelines to use these terms, but again, it's not pre-approved before it hits the market shelves. I hope this video has you feeling informed for your next stroll down the grocery store aisle, or if you're like me, your next online grocery order. Don't let the nonsense claims fool you. Thanks so much for watching. If you found this info helpful, give this video a thumbs up and consider sharing this video to help spread the word on these nonsense food marketing claims. I'd love it if you subscribed. It really helps out our channel so we can put more videos out like this one, sharing factual nutrition information to help you stay informed and be able to sift through all the nonsense that's out there. And now that you know what to actually buy, if you're looking for healthy eating hacks, check out this video right here. Again, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Until then, eat well, be well, thrive.